All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. I wanted to make a recap video to kind of help you understand um, the last thing that we learned in Unit 7, which was balancing chemical equations. And the big idea here is that we can never lose or create matter. Matter needs to be conserved. So when I have both sides of a chemical equation, the left side being what's being used up in the reaction known as reactants, making products, which are on the right side of the equation, the number of atoms on both sides needs to be the same. And the way that I do this is with this method of adding atoms either on either side to give me a balanced or conserved chemical equation. Now in a previous video that accidentally got deleted, I showed examples three and eight from worksheet number one. Okay, I'm gonna get us on to question number 13 on our worksheet and check to make sure that we can do this method. There may be other methods like using ratios or kind of coming up with common factors or multiples, but that gets a little bit more overwhelming than what actually happens in chemistry, which is adding atoms or elements or compounds to have a full reaction, okay? And so what we end up writing then are coefficients, which tells me how many atoms or molecules completely are used to make a complete reaction. So for example, for the reaction of aluminum and oxygen to form aluminum oxide, I need four aluminums to react with three oxygens, which are O2, to form two aluminum oxides. Okay, any other ratio would not, or any other relationship would not give me a full complete reaction. All right, so now I'm gonna zoom us on down to question number 13 where I kind of already got started. The first step is really to start drawing the particle diagrams for the elements or compounds found in the reaction. I like to use different colors, but you could use shades, you could use symbols, you could use any other shapes as well. Sometimes squares or diamonds or hearts are what other people have used. For me, I use green for carbon, Black is for hydrogen, and purple is for oxygen. So here is CH4, here is O2, here is CO2, where that green is still carbon and purple is still oxygen, and I have H2O, which purple is still oxygen and black is still hydrogen. Um, as I was checking some of your work or going over and speaking with some of you as you were doing question 13, some of you flipped oxygen either your shape or color. Some of you thought that your oxygen was your hydrogen and you had two oxygens here instead of one. So I'm just giving you a heads up on make sure you keep track of what color is what and how many of each atom there are in a compound. Okay, so in this compound of water, there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. Another note I wanted to make about O2 is O2 is a molecule. That's one of our particle words. Don't forget way back in unit three and four, we talked about particle words versus substance word. O2 is a molecule. It has two oxygen atoms that have combined. So if I wanna count the total number of atoms, there are two atoms of oxygen in a molecule of O2. Okay, so now I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna try and balance my chemical equation. So I'm looking at my chemical equation, I'm looking for an element or color or atom that is not in the same amount on both sides. Uh, off the top of my head immediately, I notice that I only have two oxygens on the left and three oxygens on the right. So I have to add oxygens. Now be careful, I can't just add a single oxygen atom like this and say, okay, I'm done. Because the single oxygen atom is not part of this chemical reaction, O2 is. So if I wanna add oxygen on the left side to kind of keep this balance, I have to add oxygen in the form of O2. So you have to be careful. I know it looks like it's counterproductive or it looks like I'm adding too much, but I can't just add a single oxygen atom. A single oxygen atom is not what participates in this reaction, it's O2. So now I've added oxygen in the form of O2 on the left reactant side. And now I notice that that is not an equal amount on both sides. So I have four oxygens on the left and three on the right. So I wanna add more oxygens. Well, I need to add one more oxygen on the right side for right now. So in order for me to do that, I have to add, if, if I wanna add something in the form of one oxygen, I would have to add H2O, because H2O has one oxygen. If I were to add CO2, CO2 has two oxygens, and I'm adding too much. That's where I figure out which one, which one could give me the oxygen amount that I need, right? 
So I'm going to say that again. I have four oxygens on the left, and I had three on the right to start. I need to add one more oxygen. Both of these compounds supplies oxygen, but which of these supplies me with one oxygen? That's water. So I'm going to add another oxygen and two H's for H2O. Okay, and now let me see if my chemical reaction is balanced or if I need to add any more. I have one green carbon on the left, one green carbon on the right. I have four hydrogens on the left, four black hydrogens on the left. I, have, I happen to have four black hydrogens on the right. That's good. I have two, four oxygens on the left. I have one, two, three, four oxygens on the right. This equation is balanced. Now my last step here is to put coefficients to tell me how many total molecules or atoms or elements were used to make this chemical reaction. So I only used one CH4. You don't have to put one, but I'm gonna put it just so you know. One is usually assumed. It's kind of like when you have one X or X of the first, one is assumed. I used two O2 molecules. I made one CO2 and I made two H2O. So then there, that is the balanced chemical equation for this reaction, okay? I'm gonna do another one. So I'm gonna jump to a previous one that you had done on a different handout, just so you get the idea of that sometimes it might not be so simple and clean cut, you have to do a couple more steps. So let me do number three on your activity, All right? I'm gonna do it all together, okay? So for number three now, I have Na plus O2 gives me Na2O. I'm going to use red for Na, and I'm going to use purple for O2, and I'm going to make Na2O. So I need O, one O as a product, and two Na's. Okay? Now, in looking at this, automatically I could tell that I don't have enough oxygen atoms on the right side or I don't have enough Na atoms on the left side. You could choose which, which route you go. It does not matter. I'm going to go the route of, okay, I notice that I have two Na's on the right and one on the left. I'm going to add an Na. Okay, and now I'm almost there. I have two Na's on the left, two Na's on the right. I have two O's on the left, I only have one O on the right. If I want to add another O to get two and two, I have to add O in the form of Na2O. Okay, almost there now. Now I have four Na's on the right side and only two on the left side. So I have to add two more Na's. And now, in inspection, I notice that my chemical equation is balanced. And I'm going to use coefficients to tell me how many atoms or molecules I use in this reaction. So I used four Na's, only one O2, and I made two Na2O's. And remember, this is a coefficient. It tells me how many elements or compounds or atoms or molecules are used to completely react. I cannot have leftover and I cannot um, have uncomplete or incomplete products, okay? All right, so I'm hoping this video was helpful in reminding you on how to balance chemical equations using particle diagrams. Remember, it's kind of like a game where you're going back and forth and you have to add atoms and molecules until you have the same amount on both sides. And then once you do that, then you have to put coefficients in front of each element and compound to write the balanced chemical equation. This 4Na plus 1O2 gives me 2Na2O is the balanced chemical equation. If I was given chemical equations and asked if the equation was balanced, I need to count atoms. I have 4Na right here given in the problem, and I have 2Na2, which gives me 4Na on the right. I have 1O2, so I have two O's on the left, and I have 2 times 1O, so that's two O's on the right. This is balanced, and I have the same number of atoms on both sides. Okay, my next video will help you go from writing a balanced chemical equation from a word equation and then doing these steps in balancing.